in our prosperity arena, we are looking how we can empower people. You know, why do we want to empower people? Well, we want to empower people to be more productive. You know, the, the, the critical thing is to cause people to produce goods and services in abundance. We want them to be more and more productive. We want them to increase their productivity with the knowledge that they have. We want people to bring about transformation. In other words, we want new things to happen. We want complex situations to be solved, you know, so that we will have good and easy ways for people to live and raise their level of living. And we want to set a sustainable, positive pace for generations to come. So how do we empower people? One very critical thing is to build trust. So people have to be sure that the situation, that the environment is stable. You cannot really invest in people and trust that you will get the results that you want if you don't have real trust, if you don't build trust. So it is important that organizations, communities, persons, people ensure that they build trust amongst themselves. So you know that when I ask this person to do such and such, they will actually do such and such because they have said they would do such and such. So we got to make sure that we have that. We also have to make sure that there's economic freedom so that the people can be connected to their endowments. Because, you know, how can they be successful? Sometimes we go see some people in Nigeria here. We have people in the Niger Delta uh, or even somewhere like Zamfara State. And we would say, oh, these guys are poor. They are not able to produce stuff. But that's the reason that's happening is because we have tied their hands behind their back, away from the endowments that God is giving to them. So I believe that we should allow people to be able to engage their endowments. If they engage their endowments, then they can be prosperous. And you yourself that are given this power, whether you be a government or you be a society, you be a monarchy or whatever it is that you are, you have to also stay competent and have the ability with the power and authority to give to people. Because if you don't have authority, then how will you be able to share authority? You cannot share something you do not have. And then you give them the tools, to give people the tools to be able to work. Human capital development works better when there are complementary tools that people can use. And these tools will involve the source of knowledge and how they can actually be able to produce the goods and services that we want. This is what will give them the authority when they see that, hey, I can actually do these kinds of things. They will have the power and the authority. The other thing we also want to be sure that we give to them is courage. Encourage people. You know, gotta tell them to be courageous. Now you most certainly can't get many things done in the world today unless you are courageous because it's not that easy to get things done. And the reason why it's not been done before is because maybe people were not courageous enough to do it. And so we have to encourage people, motivate people, give them encouragement so that they can be successful. And then we have to also show appreciation when they do it, when we recognize them. But as we do that, we recognize also their limitations. Sometimes we expect way too much from, from people at work, employees at work. We expect even too much from leaders. Uh, and, and we have to be sure that we know that these people have limitations throughout the world. There are, there's order and there are boundaries, uh, just like on a soccer field. Um, there are just certain things you cannot do. You can do certain things, but there are others that you cannot do because there are rules, there are boundaries and there are borders, and there are limitations. And then we should also finally uh, be sure to provide rewards. So we reward achievement.